my morning routine. But I get the kids up and um, go back upstairs 10 minutes later and get the kids up because no one wants to get up in the morning. You want a bacon sandwich? Yes? Yes. Okay. That's exciting, eh? And then your whole day is always exciting, isn't it? Nikki over here. Um, I tend to have to keep on saying, right, you need to do this, and then you need to do this, and then you need to do this. I've kind of had to supervise the, the morning routine a lot, probably more than if you would with any other 21 and 22 year olds, because they kind of just get on with their own thing. Morning, Anne. Emma. Emma. <laughs> Did you say good morning to me? Me. Oui. Emma. Yeah, Hi, Nikki. Hi. Morning, Emma. Morning. 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 Thank you very much. It's, um, it's only 13 months between them. It was really well planned. <laughs> we had um, we had four kids in six years and three bakeries all at the same time. During that period also, we just bought our first house, which was a wreck and renovated it from top to bottom while living in it. So that was quite a, that was a busy sort of period. Right, girls, how are we doing for time? Hello. Quarter two, we've got 10 minutes to get in the car and you and I can go off to work. Hello. See, everybody's helpful. You go and hop in the car, please. The girls are actually really, really different from each other. So and Nikki's very vocal and talks all the time, whereas Emma doesn't talk very much. We're just dealing with individuals. Um, and then the Down syndrome part sort of came as very, very secondary. So it was good to be able to put that away really early in the piece. Are you ready to go and see your friends? Oh. <laughs> you say that every day and then you love it when you go inside. Our commutes can take an hour each way in, in Auckland's wonderful traffic. First, we drop Nikki at school, and then Emma and I head off to work. Foot outside. Nikki's just turned 21, and she's in her final year at Somerville Special School, and they can only stay until they turn 21, and after that, it's off to work, if they can find a job. See you later. Close the door, please. Bye. Good morning, Nikki. Yeah. How are we? Are we happy? Happy now. Oh, you're happy. That's Emma and I, we spend our work days at Downlights Candles. It's a, a business we started just a few months ago. After Emma left school, I approached so many employers to see if they'd give her a job and basically got nowhere. So I thought, well, I've been self-employed most of my life, so why don't I just set up our own business and then she can work in that. We've always had candles at home, and Emma really likes them, so I thought, let's make candles. That'll be a piece of cake. Thanks for the coffee, honey. What Wanna are you going to do today? I'm going to do lots of work. Are you going to work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right, yeah. What's first? Well, so we made a few candles, like, OK, it's not a piece of cake. This apparently has got hidden depths, and it's a lot more difficult than, uh, than you would think. I'll do a few, and then you can come and finish off. Sure, sure. After only a week or so, I was saying to these friends that, do you know what, I think I need some advice about this. And um, my friend said, I've got a friend who's got a candle company that she lives just down the road. I was a little concerned about the steps he was taking with the business. So I offered him the opportunity to use the manufacturing facility at Illumina so that it would save him costs at the beginning and to show him a few tricks of the trade. I was born in Canada, and I've lived in New Zealand for 22 years now. I fell in love with New Zealand, and I just had to stay. I've always been involved in something crafty, so making candles just seemed like a fun thing to do. Tony had a very small range, a few fragrances. He did this market, 
and that led to Seven Sharp doing a story with Tim Wilson. You probably don't know about candle making, is it happens at a pretty high temperature. How, how warm is it? It's a secret, Tim. It's secretly warm. After that, we sold a candle a minute for two days. So we very quickly developed a business name, a tagline, ordered new glassware, developed a logo, all within three or four days. The name Downlights, I definitely wanted to have a connection between Down Syndrome and the name of the company. You take the pegs off and put them in the bucket, you know how it goes. And I'll do this, I'll do the, uh, I'll do the wax, okay? Thank you. For Jennifer and Illumina to basically hand over her intellectual property so quickly to us, four or five years of worth of experience and really, really hard work, which we haven't had to go through. You know, your intentions and goals with Emma were just so genuine. And I just really wanted you to succeed for, for Emma so that she would have something in her life every day. And uh, there was just no way I could have let you flop. <laughs> <laughs> when we first started, everything was, had to be supervised, whereas now it's just a case of just point out that needs doing and Within 30 seconds, she's up and doing it and, and on her own. So once she's learned how to do the jobs, then I'll just set the task, walk away. She's right into it. That's really good. She's really risen to the challenge of the fact of having to get up every day and uh, travel to work and spend the whole day at work. But she's, you know, she's really putting herself into it big time. Yeah. Can you take the bags off? And then I'm going to get that wax that we just poured. I'm going to add the fragrance and pour the candles. Okay. Okay. Good. You do that, and I'll get the wax. Since we started doing this, the, her independence has really blossomed. It's been fantastic, really, to see to see the changes in her. She feels achievement from what she's doing. You know, we'll, we'll do jobs, and she'll be smiling right at the end of it when we've finished it. You know, she's obviously very proud of herself and, and what we're doing. Her confidence is just growing and growing. OK, do all the sticks and we'll take them off, and then we're going to pour the candles. What's that one, Gregory? Supermarket trolley and Gary. Gary's away. OK. Cool. And what's that? Uh, you don't know. I think it's, it's a trophy. A trophy? Well done, <gasps> you! <laughs> when they turn 21, that is the biggest challenge, because businesses often don't take on um, people with disabilities. We have a lot of opportunities for them to practice the skills that they personally need for when they finish school. They're ready for their next step. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, that next step doesn't happen. And the parents that I talk to really struggle because they would like their child to continue going to work. We need to do some stretches. Ready to do some stretches? Come stand over here. Having a job, having a role, having a purpose gives them a reason to get up in the morning. They like to contribute to society. What Tony's done is given Emma an opportunity to create a life that she wants, and I feel that would be the same for Nikki as well. Do you know where that was? What country was that? Spain. It wasn't Spain, it was in France. France. Yeah. Do you remember going to Spain? Yeah, Spain. Yay. Food was fantastic. <laughs> What's the next picture? Press. About four and a half years ago, I sold the cafe that we had in Maratai. And um, <laughs> we travelled. <laughs> I'd been working seven days a week for 25, 30 years, so we decided that we would travel. <laughs> And um, so we went to Europe, Spain and France, a lot of the time in the UK. To England. Do you like it there? No. No? Here. Yeah. I was really amazed, you know, and that, well, I don't know why I should be amazed, because nothing they do amazes me anymore. Yeah. They um, yeah. took to travelling like a duck to water. Yeah. That's Nana's house, that's right. <laughs> OK. That's you, I know. Yeah. You love pictures of yourself. <laughs> Who's that girl? Who's that girl? It's Emma. It's Emma. It's Emma. You're looking gorgeous there, Em. 
There's me and Harrison. Hey! He was just a little boy. He's taller than me now. First in line, Harrison, so he's our oldest. 17 months later, Claudia came along. And then uh, Emma was born undiagnosed, but was diagnosed at birth with Down syndrome, which at the time was really devastating. It wasn't something we'd considered. All those questions, why me? What have I done to my family? Um, all the destructive questions that you do to yourself, like what if, what if I just stayed with two? I should have just stayed with two. And then I had the weirdest dream and it was my grandmother saying, it's gonna be okay. And I woke up in the morning feeling like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. It was quite bizarre. I could see black and white television documentaries, pictures in my head of uh, institutionalized people. So devastating, really. I mean, it's like, oh my God, that's what we've got to look forward to. Mom. Carolyn was the receptionist at a business where I went looking for a job and uh, was very pleased to meet the, the receptionist. Our decision about having another child after Emma, I think a lot of our friends probably kind of thought, whoa, really, you want to have more kids? The initial thought was, oh, yeah, let's have another baby and that will sort of push Emma along from behind and once you've got three kids, you're lost anyway. So might as well have four, might as well have 40. It doesn't make any difference, you know. You're so immersed in, in family. Nikki was born 13 months after Emma. And lo and behold, then she was born with Down syndrome as well. We were even more shocked than we were the first time around. And the first, the initial thought was like, ah, oh, this is just disaster. The way it's actually turned out is completely the opposite. If Nikki had been born as an average person, she probably would have overtaken Emma and Emma would have been left as the one child sort of on her own in a way. They get on like a house on fire, so it's fantastic. They're gonna have a friend for life. I wouldn't be without them, I wouldn't change a thing. If I had my time over and if I had a wish fairy come down and say, I could change it all for you, I'd just say, no, go away. I'm really, they're just amazing kids. Um, yeah, so Carolyn was diagnosed with breast cancer in um, 2007. Basically, the, the option was a mastectomy, and Carolyn said, right, book me in tomorrow. We're going to do something about this. She had six months of chemo. It was pronounced fit and well that she, she'd beaten it. Unfortunately, uh, cancer decided it was going to make a return visit to Carolyn only a few years later. Um, and then she, so she was re-diagnosed again with a, an even more serious cancer in 2010. And uh, this, this time they told us it was terminal. Can you cut there, please? After she passed away, I decided that her positive attitude was something which I had to mimic to start off with because, I, as I say, I wasn't a particularly positive person at the time. And I figured that uh, I'd live by the mantra of attitude positive, which is something I actually ended up having it tattooed on my chest so that every morning when I woke up, I could look at that and go, that's how you're going to be today. And you've only got to do it for a day. And then the next day, you've only got to do it for another day. And eventually you keep on trying to live like that and try to live like that. And eventually you do, and you actually start becoming that way. Yay. You trust me? I trust you, Nikki. I think the issues for me at that time were practical issues in that I was still running a business, which was a cafe at the time, seven days a week, starting at 7 a.m. and finishing at 5 p.m. And how do you work 70 hours a week and look after four kids at the same time? So Claudia, my oldest daughter, was due to go to university at that particular point. And I suggested to her that maybe she delays university for a year, and she helped me look after Nikki and Emma. We talked about it and decided that I would take Emma and Nikki on, kind of doing the school runs in the morning, you know, waking up, getting them ready, driving them to school, and if they needed after-school activities, I would be in charge of that. For Emma and Nikki, it was great because it gave them someone to focus on who was, you know, consistent every day, dropping them at school. They had a routine that they could stick to. It was really good just to spend a lot of time with my sisters, I got to spend a lot of time with my dad, and I did have to grow up a little bit. You know, I was 17, fresh out of school, going from hanging with my friends and doing school all day to being essentially a full-time, not a parent, but a caregiver. So it did make me grow up a little bit faster than maybe I needed to. 
if, if that wasn't the situation. But I think ultimately I've turned out a better person for it. During that period of time where she gave me that grace period, um, I reorganised my business and um, took on more stuff and sort of extracted myself from the business so I didn't have to be there the whole time, which meant that I could then step in and actually take a, a, a more active role in, in being with the girls and looking after the girls. And it's continued from there in that way. An inch that way and an inch that way. Okay. We're at Eastridge Shopping Centre in Mission Bay. So we've got a Facebook event happening so that people know we're here. And often when we do these events, look, we get lots of people come to see us and come to meet Emma. Thank you, Del. It's just got better and better, really, is to be so outgoing and so confident in herself and running around and smiling and enjoying herself. That's for you. That's great. Would you like a receipt? No. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your support. Thank, Thank you. you. She's stepped up as far as meeting strangers, to see her handle all these different environments and different experiences, and, and the shyness is going slowly. I think I mentioned before, you know, that having two kids with Downs in the same family, so as you can see, they got, you know, they get on like a house on fire. And, and the, this is demonstrated constantly. That's it. Thank you. And I think people um, respect the fact that we're trying to do something for ourselves instead of expecting other people to help us. So, um, no, it's, it's always a great response. So, 1,450 followers. Social media, it's gone crazy. It makes us feel what we're doing is something really worthwhile because so many people are coming on board and, and, and telling us that. I think I'm fortunate in that that's another, that's another like. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so you're wearing all your clothes? We got my, my clothes on. You've got all your clothes on, you've got your suitcase packed. Yes, yeah, okay. Where are you going? Where are you going to go to? I don't know. Just somewhere. Do you want to go travelling again? To the shovel. <laughs> I'm going. You want to go and make some toast? No, no, what? You don't want toast? What are you looking at? I'm looking at you. What guy? Hey, excuse me. Kiss. Excuse me. Kiss me. Thank you. <laughs> Love you too. The amount of exposure that we've had has been phenomenal. And Disney Digital Network contacted us and said, look, we want to do a, an article on our digital network and got a fantastic response off that. And then there was a, another company in the States who um, obviously had connections with Disney somehow or another, and it's a, a video production company called Everhance. And they in turn came to us and said, we love what you're doing and we're really inspired by it and we want to make a promotional video. So Everhance came to us and said that after they finished the video and said, we've got a connection with a very famous person, George Takei of Star Trek fame. Turns out that he's got 10 million followers and the bigger it gets, the better it gets because we will then have to step up production and then we can start employing other people. So the whole idea really is, as we go further, is to create a, a factory situation, get it much bigger so that we can employ other people with Down syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can give the girls hugs again. Hello. Can I say hi there? So we're at the, the Franklin Tap House in Beachlands, which is our local pub. We only come in twice a week. And, uh, and because of now, of course, the, the support and the following we get with downlights, now we're getting people coming up to us and chatting to us when we're in the pub as well, which is great. Let's really enjoy it. There was a, a really big All Blacks game on and we came down for that. And we met a couple of bikers who were so impressed with the way that the girls were enjoying the whole thing. And, and they knew about our story as well, so they knew what we were doing. And they were like, oh, look, we want to buy the girls some All Blacks t-shirts. And then about a week later, I got a phone call from, uh, from one of the guys Come and meet us in the pub this afternoon, so we've got those t-shirts for the girls. 
So this is again the, you know, the outpouring of generosity and the way that people have been the support is brilliant. They're just so full of love. Like they're just there to have fun and you know make the most of their time. They're just so open and friendly and sometimes too friendly. You know when you go out and they just want to talk to everyone and I'm kind of more reserved so I like to stay back a bit but they just you know they love hugs, they love laughing. A couple years ago I decided Emma and Nikki's favourite band were in town so we decided last minute that I would take them there and we had a great time but I remember talking to this woman who was next to me and she could obviously recognise Emma and Nikki both had Down syndrome and so she started asking me questions and I, I told her that you know they're my sisters and the amount of praise that I got from her I found really unusual because she was saying you know you're an incredible sister how amazing that you're doing this for them but in my mind I was kind of taken aback a little bit because obviously you know they're my sisters and I don't really think that they're that, that different from other people so it's kind of the same as if, if they didn't have Down syndrome and I was taking my sisters out. <laughs> they shouldn't have to stay home just because they have special needs you know they can go out and have fun and like I probably didn't even need to be there. They would find it on their own dancing and singing and have a great time. <laughs> kind of a reality check I suppose that you know they are different but that's just who they are. I hope that they can be more independent. It'd be great for them to have dreams and be able to follow those dreams and actually have something that they want to do instead of us, you know, going, cool, here's an idea, let's go through with that. And then they have a great time anyway, but I'd love for them to think of stuff on their own to be like, this is what I want to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you want to sit next to Nick, Em? Own in pocket. I hope that they can have a future which is not dependent on me, and that's really a big part of what this is all about, of trying to get them on that path. I, I, I suppose, practically speaking, that I think they're going to need some sort of help. They're going to need some sort of supervision or just a nudge here and there. But then they keep on surprising me as well as to how bloody clever they are. Nicky, can you give me your jacket? Nick. If things keep moving as fast as they, as they have in the last few months, then yeah, I think maybe they could be living on their own and just maybe have someone could just come in and check on them occasionally and make sure everything's OK. Warm, you? You Whatever their independence level is, I want to get them up as far as they possibly can up that ladder. <laughs> I don't think I've sacrificed anything. I think I've, I've just done what all parents do. And uh, I mean, okay, you can call it sacrifice, but it, it's not sacrifice, we choose. But how, how is that a sacrifice if you've chosen to do what you want to do? It's not a sacrifice. I've started thinking more about the future and what happens to my youngest two kids as I get older and as they get older. So I thought I'd start to sit down and write down some of my thoughts about my family, the children, their lives and maybe their hopes and dreams and, and my hopes and dreams for them. Well, I just want to say that I'm, I'm a very, very lucky man. I was blessed with the love and the company of a wonderful woman and was lucky enough to spend 25 years with her. I know our greatest achievements was all of you. Every day, I'm really proud to be your dad. Every day, I love you more. Every day, I worry for you, and I know I shouldn't. You're all gonna do great things. Every day, I feel lucky to have you in my life.